Hi, I'm Zara Intiaz. Welcome to Asian Agribiz podcast. Today, Arif Fakhruddin is speaking to Paul Brisman, head of innovation at MOBA Group, about egg washing and its trend in Asia. Good morning. Hello, Paul. Good afternoon here from Indonesia. Yeah, good, good afternoon to you. How are you? I'm doing very well, Paul. Um, a little bit about yourself. What do you do as head of innovation at MOBA, Paul? Yeah, well, I, I've been uh, uh, starting up our product, man product management department for the last uh, 20 years. So that means uh, leading the, the new developments and the new projects for yeah, new equipment, new functions on, uh, on machinery. And due to the growth of the company, um, it was no longer possible to combine, let's say, the far future plans with the, the running projects, the, the actual projects that are taking place. So we decided in our management team to split that function and uh, a new colleague, well new, he's already uh, two and a half, three years in operation right now. He's taking care of the traditional product management tasks and marketing, so product marketing department. And he is running all the, the actual projects. And together with a little team, I'm concentrating on, let's say, the 10 year roadmap of MOBA. So um, we're looking at research projects with universities. We do uh, a lot of research ourselves with our R&D team. And uh, yeah, also uh, yeah, constructing business cases, customer interviews, and yeah, try to define the long term plans for the MOBA company. Amazing. Yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice job. Okay, today we are talking about washed versus non-washed eggs. Yes, Before we correct. dive deeper into that, let's start with the definition of egg washing. Yes, well, the definition is that um, you do something to an egg in order to um, yeah, to clean it, first of all, eh? it's, it, it is originating from an optical, a cosmetic point of view. You want a cleaner egg. And um, yeah, if there's some, some manure or some dust or some dirt on an egg, you want to remove it. So it's, it, it starts off with a cosmetic uh, purpose. And in the end, uh, with all the food safety requirements, the, the pressure has become more to to cleaning it also from a food safety point of view and um, yes there's a few ways to do it uh, but basically you can distinguish two ways one is that the eggs are on a transport mechanism rollers we call them in egg grading machines and with brushes and water spray you clean the eggs while they are on this transport conveyor and the other way to do it, and uh, um, actually you find that uh, mostly in Japan, that the eggs are actually partly uh, submerged. So they are in a sort of channel. And while the eggs are being uh, transported through a sort of little channel, water flows down in that channel. So uh, in, the, in the first example, when the eggs are on, on rollers, that means the eggs are not submerged. They are only in the shower, you can say. And and mm. and uh, in in the channel washer uh, construction as used in Japan, they are partially submerged. And then you have also for egg processing. Uh, that's also a typical Japanese style, I would say, that the eggs are truly submerged. They're going into a bath, and then with a conveyor there. <clears throat> excuse me. Then they're with a conveyor there, uh, taken out of this bath. So we know for egg uh, for shell eggs basically two methods, partly submerging in a channel and uh, yeah, kind of shower nozzle system, brush system. And for processing, you have those two plus an additional totally uh, a bathtub where the eggs are submerged. Okay. What liquid that is used to wash the eggs? Um, Water? Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's of course water, and in uh, many cases it is only water, um, and uh, in most cases actually there is some detergent added to the water that uh, makes the, the dirt come off more easy. 
So that's that's the first step. So you while removing it's basically a sort of soap. Eh? Um, and then there's always a final rinse situation. So after washing, you get another spray cycle, final rinse. And that is taking place with a higher temperature normally and uh, and some chemicals added like chlorine uh, or quads to to re to reduce the yeah the bacterial load. So then you have a two stage process. Stage one is actually removing the dirt, and stage two is final rinsing and disinfection. I see. So the main goal for egg washing is food safety, right? Yeah, although the opinions vary a lot uh, on that uh, uh, topic, eh? you know probably that um, like in the US, you have to wash eggs. It is required by the, the USDA regulations. So you have to wash eggs in order to sell a premium quality eggs. And in Europe, you may not wash eggs. It is forbidden to wash first quality eggs. So um, and there's reason for both. Um, yeah, yeah. And there are I, I, I'm not a scientist, so um, but there are scientific papers um, that point in the different directions. But the, the common conclusion, I would say, is that if everything is perfect, your temperature conditions, your your detergent, your your washing water, your filtration, the quality of your water, uh, the storage after washing, we have to talk about that as well. Um, if everything is perfect, egg washing will contribute to food safety. But if only a few of the parameters are not perfect, then you do more damage to the egg than good. So it is a very fragile balance. Everything yeah. has to be right to 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 really contribute to food safety. OK. In an article on your website. The statement is egg washing is not a common practice worldwide. Why no. is that? Um, yeah, it depends on, on culture. It, uh, re, it depends on history and, and on, uh, on the regulations, uh, governmental uh, uh, regulations that are in place. Um, and I think also a very important point is that because if you, if you want, an egg is by mother nature perfectly protected against all kind of uh, yeah, influences from outside. An egg is, of course, created by Mother Nature to bring a new life onto the planet. Eh? It is created to bring a, a little chick uh, to the world. Um, and although our consumption eggs are not fertilized, the same mechanism is in place. That means around the egg is a sort of little wax protein layer. Um, we call it the cuticle or the plume of the egg. So the cuticle is a little layer protecting the eggshell. So it's actually outside of the eggshell. Then you have the eggshell itself. Then you have two membranes. Then you have to egg white. And all those components are barriers for bacteria, for dangerous bacteria. Dangerous for the little chick if, if it is a fertilized egg, but also if it is a consumption egg, uh, it protects the egg from being contaminated. And all even the egg white is very difficult for bacteria to survive. And only when the bacteria finally reach the yolk, that is, of course, very nutritious because that is where uh, it is meant to construct a little chicken. Eh? There is all the nutrients uh, inside. If bacteria go inside the yolk, then uh, the egg really gets spoiled very quickly. So if you leave the egg totally as it is, uh, as it is created by Mother Nature, it's already perfectly protected. And what you do with the egg washing, you take off this cuticle, this outside protection layer, you damage it, and that means bacteria can go in a little bit more easy. Then there's still the other barriers, like uh, the membranes, the shell itself, the, the, the albumin, that's still in place. But you reduce a little bit of that natural defense mechanism. And that means also that if you wash the eggs, you should have a cool chain in place. So after production, you should keep the eggs refrigerated. And what we see in some countries that they want to do the egg washing because they see, oh yeah, it's contributing to the food safety, but then transport in trucks, uh, storage in supermarket warehouses, uh, storage in the supermarket itself, and storage at the consumer at home, 
is not refrigerated, yeah, and then it becomes risky. In such an environment, you can better not wash the eggs. But mm -hmm. if everything is perfect, then yeah, you can consider to wash eggs. So it's depending on also, yeah, the history, how it always has been. And for instance, in the US, eggs are in uh, uh, in the supermarket in a, in a cool uh, cabinet, in a, in a refrigerator. And in Europe, in, in Holland, where I live, or in Germany, or in, in the UK, if you go to a supermarket, the eggs are just at ambient temperature. They're not kept refrigerated. So, yeah, it, it's it's the whole infrastructure, not only the washing itself, but the whole transport and, and uh, storage chain afterwards that also uh, comes into play. Yeah, so if you want to wash your eggs and then sell the washed eggs, you must ensure that you have good infrastructure to uh, provide an intact cold chain system, right? Yeah, that's that's correct. Yeah, because for I always give the example, if I have two perfect eggs and one I will wash and the other one not, and I put them here in the summertime at this table and I go on holiday for three weeks, after three weeks, the unwashed eggs, I, I still can eat without a problem. I, I with my eyes closed, I will eat that egg, not a problem. But the washed egg, ooh, that's becoming already risky if it's non-refrigerated. So that is a very good indication between washing and non-washing. And then there is, of course, another important factor. It consumes an awful lot of energy to wash eggs. You need big heat exchanges to get the washing water to a certain temperature because temperature, we need to talk about that as well. It's quite important. And um, and you need to dry the eggs because if you if the eggs are wet and you would pack them then in a consumer pack, you get a very high chance of of mold growth, eh? so uh, fungus on the eggs and and all kinds of microtoxins, and that's also dangerous for human consumption. So washing with right temperatures and then drying it, it consumes an awful lot of energy, and that's uh, also something to take in consideration because energy is becoming costly and uh, yeah all the cool chain afterwards is also costing a lot of electrical energy so um, not yet i don't hear that discussion yet but i would not be surprised if that comes into play as well if you look at the cost per egg that is uh, involved in in egg washing i see yeah i guess uh if we are talking about the non-washed eggs, I guess the cuticle has also a shelf life, right? So how long the, the cuticle can protect the eggs after the eggs uh, were laid by the hands? Yeah, well, there, there's some different numbers there, but normally you would say at ambient temperature, uh, it is not only the yeah, because this cuticle will dry out to a certain extent. Eh? So, so yes, you're mm -hmm. right. There is a shelf life to the cuticle itself, but you you, you should talk about this, the shelf life of the entire egg because yeah, as long as the protection is in place, it is edible and uh, afterwards it becomes risky. So uh, normally you say um, if an egg is uh, unwashed, the shelf life of the egg at ambient temperature, let's say 20 degrees uh, centigrade, is, is about three weeks. Please. If if you keep them if you keep them refrigerated, unwashed eggs they can easily last up to three months without becoming uh, dangerous in in food safety perspective. If for washed eggs it is less. Then for washed eggs you should not keep them unrefrigerated. Uh, after a couple of days it becomes already risky, and uh, if it's really very well uh, cooled. Um, I don't know what the shelf life is, but definitely not three months. It, it is less. Mm. So if people want to keep eggs in countries where they wash, uh, if they need to store eggs, they store them unwashed. And then just before getting them ready for consumption, then they're washed. So you actually don't wash them and then store them for a long time. You store them for a long time and then wash. OK. So um, you mentioned about the situation in the U.S. and then the situation in Europe. What about the situation in Asia when it comes to egg washing? Yeah, that, that's very interesting because um, 
example, US and Europe is very, very straightforward eh, because it's arranged by law. And what we see in Asia that there often is no regulation on it. And it is the mm. choice for the producer to choose for one or the other. So we see in, in there's a few exceptions like Japan, all the eggs are washed. Uh, but in a lot of countries, uh, you can choose whether to wash the eggs, yes or no. Eh? If we talk about China, there's big installations where the eggs are washed, and there's also big installations where the eggs are not washed. So that's uh, there's no regulation, uh, no federal regulation or so prescribing what to do. But it is the, the choose uh, it is to choose for the for the producer what to do. So it really depends on consumer preferences, right? in Asia. Yeah, and, and we see the tendency that more and more uh, uh, go towards washing. And in some situations, I am very confident that that is a very good choice where the infrastructure is in place. But I've also seen situations where the eggs are washed and then it's a very hot outside and they go on a truck without any refrigeration to wherever in the country, uh, traveling in, in, in hot uh, environments, uh, that then I think, ooh, if it was my choice, I wouldn't have washed those eggs. But yeah, you see you see both. And it's not only also in Pacific countries, like in Australia, uh, it is not mandatory to wash the eggs, but we see more and more uh, of our customer base starting to wash eggs. So it's becoming more and more practice. Mm. Do you think egg washing will be a new trend in Asia in the next five, ten years? Yeah, I think so. I see an, an increase of uh, installations with washers uh, implemented. So, yeah, there's. it's not becoming less, it's becoming more. That, that is my opinion. Okay. So, now, uh, what is the solution from MOBA when it comes to egg washing? Um, Actually, uh, our solution is that, um, first of all, uh, Arif, it's good to know that MOBA doesn't uh, produce the egg washers ourselves. We have partners uh, where we cooperate with to, to implement egg washers. But okay. what is very special about uh, the construction that we, that we offer is that uh, there is a certain sequence in, in what we call the infeed of the egg grader. So all the eggs are transported towards the mechanism where they're sorted in different uh, packing lanes yeah, for different product purposes. Uh, and in that infeed, um, we offer a construction where there is washed, uh, being washed on one section then we do a quality check, leakers, if there is a leaking egg, it is kicked out. Um, if it's a dirty egg, it's already detected in an early stage and there are possibilities to get the dirty eggs directly to what we call a rewash channel. So they are rerouted back to the washer. So suppose there's 10% of the eggs are dirty before washing and there's 1% left that is not cleaned in the first washing action, we can route them back to the washer again. And then the eggs that are clean go onto a second section. And um, before we go there, we already remove, there's a special technology in place that removes 60, 70% of the water. So only the remaining 40% of the water on the eggs need to be vaporized by a drying section on the second section. So by splitting up that function in two sections, uh, we get better drying results and, and much cleaner eggs. So, and that is, I think where we are unique compared to, to competition. Um, but the washer itself, uh, yeah, we work with various suppliers. Uh, uh, one very important one is the company Cool from the US. And uh, we also cooperate with a Japanese company uh, named uh, Aoyama. And um, yeah, depending on the needs of the customer and, and what the exact configuration is, we cooperate with the these partners we've implemented other brands as well uh, but if we need to deliver the complete installation we go with one of these partners i see if a company is producing uh, liquid eggs and egg powders is egg washing a mandatory 
Um, yeah, in, in many yeah, in many countries it is. Again, in in some Asian countries there will be no regulations yet in place to arrange that, but it is a very good practice before. Uh, breaking the eggs to wash them because then it is very effective from from a technical point of view because if you open the egg and there is some dust or dirt on side on the outside of the eggshell there is a risk that that falls into the the liquids yeah. that you're producing and of course you do a pasteurization uh, uh, on the liquid so you could say well a little bit of bacterial contamination will not hurt but the cleaner your starting product is, the milder your pasteurization run can be. And a mild pasteurization run is very nice because then you combine a very low bacterial count with a very high quality egg products. Yeah? So your foamability, your, uh, yeah, the, let's say the possibility to use the liquids in all kinds of dishes and uh, high quality foods increases. If you do a very tough pasteurization, yeah, you basically destroy what we call the functional properties of the egg. So yeah. it is key to keep the bacterial lo load very low from a starting point. And if you're able to do that, uh, yeah, it helps to to clean the eggs because the, the risk of little particles uh, getting uh, into falling into the liquid stream uh, is reduced significantly. So then there is egg washing in place, but no egg drying. That's not needed to dry the eggs because you throw away the wet shell anyway. Mm, I see. Okay, Paul, do you have anything else to add? Very interesting talk and explanation about egg washing. Thank you very yeah, much. Well well, uh, Arif, it was a pleasure. It was uh, good to talk about this. And uh, yeah, if there's any more questions, uh, let me know. Or if listeners to this uh, story or readers, um, they can always contact us uh, for more information. Thank you for listening to another Asian Agribiz podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to this show on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you get your podcasts.